went with Ubisoft we went to the year 1995 so we are returning there and we have a small office uh, a small but efficient office I would like to call it and Cloud 5 our military shooter had actually sold rather well for about 2 million so we have about 4 million in the bank so I'm gonna check out the dev kits uh, we might want to get some for the Pony Game Station, but I don't think the... Yeah, I think we're gonna buy a uh, dev kit for the Game Boy as well. Now, when it comes to games uh, you want to buy dev kits for, the essential part is market share. If uh, they don't have any market share, you're just wasting money, because if they don't have the console, then they're not gonna play it, and that's why it could be, sometimes it's enticing to be just to develop games for the PC. So we're gonna execute some some contracts with our department here, and I think we we do not participate. And then I'm actually quite eager to let's see uh, create game reports automatically create game reports so we're gonna have our uh, department here go through basically every game we have ever done and uh, they're gonna make game reports out of that so we will learn what we've done well and what we have done wrong and this is also important because this will give us a heads up how our games have actually been really so we are currently researching more more stuff here and one thing i realized is that i never don't have to make an entire new engine every time so instead just use improve old engine we have puzzle engine we have dream engine we have gamble engine and as you can see we have basically one engine for every single one but let us say we want to make an, uh, we want to make one of our most profitable games was actually a fighting game, so we could upgrade that engine, or we could upgrade basically any of any other engine. I think actually we're gonna go with the platform engine, and we'll just add the features, and, uh, and we we can also change the name to just platform engine one, and of course we're gonna keep our profit sharing for it that way you don't get swamped with engines that basically never gets used uh, however that also means that you basically always sell the most recent one of your engines but you don't have the development cost running away on you and that is actually more important it took me a while to learn this and i'm a I'm, basically hating myself over that uh, so we're gonna improve the puzzle engine as well and basically just renaming it puzzle engine one and giving it a lot of features um, you could also you know remove some of the less advanced features such as scrolling which is replaced by parallax but this mill this engine is gonna cost us pretty much a good million to upgrade so you really need to uh, just click away the stuff that doesn't really matter. However, knowing what matters isn't always always possible. So this for this time, I'm just gonna go with you know Puzzle Engine One and leave it at that. So the next game we are gonna make is gonna be a remake. Of course, it's gonna be a remake of a puzzle game. Uh, and we got a license from our shooter engine. If you have a successful game it's usually worth it and cloud 5 ended with sales in t about two and a half million that's good so now that we have a new engine we should develop a remaster of well that's a skill game so we'll just remaster puzzle collection it wasn't really that well received but if we could just, you know, improve a little bit on it, puzzle engine, aim it for adults, and now it's puzzle. So 
basically personal computer, Apple Mac. Uh, we could develop it for the SMS as well, but I think... No, I actually think we're gonna make this into a double uh, A title. Uh, so we can really have everything we want, but that means we don't can't develop it for these eight, eight older consoles. So I'm actually gonna s we're gonna check the fan letters, but we didn't get any fan letters for this for this, and we don't have access to all our completed game reports either. So, uh, however, we might add the German language and Spanish language, uh, and as well as Chinese language and see if that increases the score. So of course here is basically all the, all the stuff we're gonna have in it. It's gonna be LAN multiplayer, split screen multiplayer. Uh, yeah, I think we're gonna keep... I'm not sure about keeping the split screen multiplayer. Uh, or the LAN multiplayer for that matter. I mean, one of them can easily be removed. And the reason I wanna remove it is that I mean I'm actually thinking about are you is th is this a puzzle game where you will actually play against someone versus LAN? So let's say it's not. And the same thing with level editor. I don't really see why a puzzle game would need a level editor. So we're removing those two and hope it's hope it actually doesn't matter because for, to me a puzzle game doesn't really need one. So we're gonna create a marketing campaign for this remaster. We're gonna stop the campaign once hype is at maximum, and we'll just do the local magazines. And of course, we need uh, to improve the sounds and we need to improve the graphics. Now, these things are something we haven't actually been able to do. Now we're gonna stop this. I just just stop this and start with the improvement of gameplay. Now this is gonna cost us a bit of dough, so hopefully our investment actually pays off with this. If it doesn't, we are going to be in a bad spot because we are bleeding money from basically just developing engines without actually having any... any... In well, I wouldn't say any intention, but at least we don't have any features left, so let's just research... Casinos, cities, conquests, cowboys, uh, dungeons, elements, els eroticism? <sighs> yeah, we're doing it. So, we already know what topic the next game is going to be. Uh, so, we're basically just keeping that. Let's uh, res. Oh, we actually have a few genres we haven't actually uh, checked out yet. So I think we're gonna go with an adventure game. I think you know where where I'm going with this one. If I'm, if uh, <laughs> if you know anything about your gaming history. So we are currently busy with our game being manufactured and we have a lot of bugs to process through and also the fact that our graphics and sound labs are horribly limited. And we haven't haven't also made that much hype with it. We have about 25 hype and it's good but it's far from Ooh, the Nintendo 63. Nice. Uh, I think we are actually going to have to wait and see how this game is received before we... No, I don't want to publish the game now, because publishing the game now would probably mean a horrible, horrible doom. So, our little office here is steadily progressing, and hopefully these guys can get stuff done soonish. Uh, yeah... Sadly, we might actually have to participate on this. It got us a lot of new fans. Uh, it costs us money, of course, but I think 100... F Ooh, nice! We got some money based on the fact that they've used our engine. 
and uh, the profit sharing is 20%, and that game sold for about 4 million, so I'm quite happy with my share, thank you very much. Uh, especially as our, however, our fans aren't happy. We don't have a support team, so basically we're bleeding fans. And that's not a good thing in this game. Uh, in fact, but we, d we don't even have the room for a support team unless we removed toilets or uh, so I'm not, not really sure how I could solve this I mean this game needs to sell well so that we can upgrade our building again and have a spot for a support team and, uh, as uh, pretty much anyone will tell you a support team is essential because right now our fans are basically looking at looking at us and wondering what the hell are we doing why aren't we why aren't we interacting with them and stuff like that and the cool render was taken off the market and of course and of course the Nintendo virtual joy nothing could make that stuff any interesting so uh, let's see here, research genres, I want to research another topic, at least. Ooh, game development. That could be a nice topic for an economical simulator. What's really annoying with uh, having this limited space is that I can't make the working spaces bigger because some, it would be nice if I could just move people from this development space and move them to the puzzle collection uh, stuff, but no, I can't. So instead we'll just have to wait and see our money bleed dry because we don't have the development space to do this quickly. Please tell me that's the last one it was, so now they get to remove the bugs, and once that is done, we can actually release the game. Hopefully without us getting bankrupt in the bargain. I have to say that a score of around 50 is not, not uh, acceptable. We need about 70 or 80 at least. And because puzzle games, they just, it's not that popular, sadly. And we are bleeding more money, so hopefully those bugs will be gone before we run out of money. Oh, come on, just hurry it up. It's crunch time. I know some studios have an anti-crunch time policy, but this one, this studio ain't that. We have a strict crunch time policy, so find a publisher and preferably one that actually likes puzzles. It's not always there is one, uh, like in this case. And if so, you really should just pick one that has a mock uh, that you have a good relationship with. In this case, Blue Ocean, who gives us a nice share. So we got 76, uh, just short of gold. That's a good score, I might add. Uh, it may not pay us back the development cost of 2 million, but it will give us a decent... It will give us enough for us to develop a new engine for adventure games. And it's gonna have all the features, except, you know, scrolling and uh, the antiquated stuff. So... Or rather, should we... I think we actually need to wait. And, of course, we're gonna buy a dev kit for the Nintendo 9 N63. Let's see about the other dev kits. Uh, the Sig Sega Mercur actually have a decent market share as well, so I'm gonna buy that as well. I wanna support that company, so... 
So we're getting the money back, and right now we're turning a profit on the puzzle collection, so that's nice. So, research features done, develop new engine, optimized for adventure games, and we'll just call it the adventure engine. Because I'm really not in the mood just for anything else. So, of course, profit sharing from that is going to be 22%, and the development costs just shy of a million. And uh, we're still bleeding fans, and that's really not a good thing. But the puzzle collection is still s selling pretty strong. I mean, it's about a profit of two and a half million, and that's actually more than our Schumer game did. Now, we could research the feature <laughs> about uh, VR 3D support, but I don't really see it as essential for an adventure game, do you? Another thing I would, however, like to research, it's this stuff. Uh, so let's... I think we're gonna have cinematic music, because it's 1997 and professional voice recording for games is far off at this point in time. So we're gonna develop a game, and we're gonna call it Larry's Adventure, and if you don't know why, ask someone who knows. It's going to be an eroticism adventure. And so of course it's gonna be aimed at adults. So we could also add sheep into there, that, or we could add, add assassins because we have, you know. So let, let's let's go with that horrible, horrible combination. Of course we could add food into it instead, or we could add puzzles, but I don't think that would be as good. So, However, since we are inexperienced in that genre, I think that uh, we could actually combine it with... We have experience with both puzzles and RPGs. So, we could of course... The France bonus is sadly strategy. But I think we want to uh, make this a bit of an RPG, but it's going to be focused on being an adventure. So. Uh, we are actually gonna rename it to Larry's Assassin Adventure, and this is gonna be uh, just bonkers. So, let's go for the Apple Mock and the Pony Game Station, and let's see, the Nintendo has actually the biggest, the Sega Mercury have the biggest market share. I'm gonna see about, I'm gonna remove the platform, uh, just to see what market... Yeah, it's at 8% market share, so... Uh, it's basically... And now, what defines a good adventure game? Uh, of course, it's gonna be a balance of gameplay and graphics. Of course, it's gonna be all about the story, because the game length doesn't really matter in that part. The same thing is that it's gonna have a deep atmosphere. It needs to be very close to, you know, you need to be immersed in the entire thing. And for the, but I want it to be a bit more beginner friendly, so we'll pick it at that. And then, of course, it's gonna be a bit more casual, so we'll just leave it at that. Now, of course, the game should not be as focused on the graphical aspect of things. An adventure game is more about the gameplay. So I'm basically just going to even out this a bit. So, yeah, I think I'm happy with this. We'll see if that works. And, of course, I'm actually going to see if increasing the amount of languages has any discernible effect. And this is not going to be a multiplayer game. So, we don't need any sort of multiplayer in it. We don't need really a level editor in it either, for that matter. So, uh, I'm just going to start improving the sounds, improving the graphics. And you people get to start improving the gameplay. And then we start the entire thing all over again. With the exception that we don't have as much money as we used to, because we basically just 
threw a bunch of money on this game. So, uh... This is gonna be a bit shorter stream than usual. I'm basically just going to see how this game of ours, this horrible abomination of a game of ours, unfolds. I mean, it could be silly enough for us to actually get away with it, you never know. But, I would be surprised if that was the case. And here we have the shooter engine once again bringing us in some damn cash and the puzzle collection is still selling i mean it sold uh, almost a million units and it's up to it sells about two thousand a week i don't think we're gonna actually pass a one million on it but it's going to be interesting regardless so we actually finished the research on cinematic music as well so i'm gonna keep on researching there i think we actually want the high resolution textures textures research as well. Uh, I think we might be able to squeeze that in while the uh, quality assurance team is doing their stuff. Or at least I'm hoping they will, because we currently don't doesn't have that much stuff for our graphics and sound lab to do. So we're we did not win Game of the Year, surprise, surprise. And if it continues like this, I'm not, not sure we, are, we ever will. So, next time when I'm developing an office, I'm most likely going to have two development spaces so I can take contract work in the meantime. But I'm also going to make sure that we have two quality assurances uh, places so that the bug fixing can be done a lot quicker. And of course, we got a total of almost 4 million for a remastered puzzle. But that just obviously there were some people who wanted that. So now we're gonna add the cinematic music onto it. And oh boy, that's gonna take a lot of time. I mean, goddamn. Oh wait, the reason it didn't update was because he wasn't actually in there. So we're gonna improve the graphics and add some high resolution textures onto that. And hopefully our stout employees are gonna be. And now, about now would be the time to create a marketing campaign. And I think we're actually we're gonna put this one on the big one. We get basically just a little unfocused. Yeah, I don't ever see my programmers go home, so maybe that's why they're unfocused. I basically just drag them into my development space, and they're not allowed to leave. So maybe that is why they were a bit unfocused. Okay, so new research feature is 16-bit color support. So we're gonna automatically re uh, research both of those. Hopefully we have the money, uh, suffi sufficient money for that. Because right now we're not getting any money while we're developing this game. So it's basically a race until either the game is done or you run out of money. Okay, so uh, the development team here, quality assurance team has some stuff to do left and the same here. So hopefully they will be done about the same time, but come on, hurry up. At the same time, this is a, the 90s is a tricky period to work in, because uh, the consoles, yeah, we actually have to invest here and show off our game in order to build hype, fans, stuff like that. Right now the hype is at 18 and we're working on it. And uh, we're gonna actually stop the automation because it's gonna cost us more money than we have to keep it up. Ooh, nice. Added sound bonus. So the last development processes are around halfway done. It's the sound that's dragging right now. Uh, apparently we have a better graphical expert than we do have uh, sound expert. Besides, this, the sound expert guy just got the munchies. So, uh, However, the actual game wasn't actually done, so that was a little bit interesting. 
but it's done now. We can release it now, but we wouldn't ever want to do that because right now it's riddled with bugs. So the quality assurance team is gonna get right on it, while the graphical and audio teams, and we're in the black, or sorry, not in the black, in the red. Uh, I mixed up the concepts there. Uh, uh, the trend is towards platformers, but we're not actually focused. I mean, considering what's unpopular right now, uh, there must have been a very unpopular sports rugby game released as of late. So I'm actually not gonna borrow money just to keep us afloat. Uh, I'm gonna wait until I have to. And then we'll see if this game will recuperate our losses. The graphical is almost done. Sounds almost done. Bugs are progressing in a steady pace. So... Yeah. Hopefully we are gonna get this game out there soon enough. Because we are 200,000 back right now. Uh, 250,000 back right now. I mean, this place is kind of expensive to run. So, with... Um, oh, we have a level 2. Focusing on game design and working that lab. Uh, maybe, just... May I need to check my staff. Who's our best guy at music and sound? Select employee. You get in there. You get out. So... Oh, get back here. You are our sound guy. Oh, come on. I'm trying to micromanage here. Now no one's working in there. Okay, so that's still our game design guy, but I think he's better, he's better in audio and sound, so... I should have noticed that earlier. The thing is, your staff skills matter. Ooh, internet multiplayer has been uh, researched. That's kind of nice. Okay, so it's just these bugs left, and hopefully, hopefully, we can relax once the bugs are quashed. Yeah, we actually have to borrow. We're not gonna borrow 15 million, but we are gonna borrow 50. Uh, we are gonna borrow that much. In fact, we're gonna borrow a million and hope that we can recuperate our losses. So, ED Software just licensed one of our engines. Not enough money to matter. However, that was enough money to matter, so we're gonna repay a bit of our credit so we don't get burned on the interest rate. Uh, whatever, regardless if it's real life or if it's or if it's uh, games, I usually try to repay my loans as quickly as possible because it's usually a good strategy when it comes to dealing with, you know, life and stuff like that. So, so we're gonna release the game and it's basically done. We're gonna find a publisher who is into adventure. Of course, there's no guarantee there actually is one on the market right now. And it, it, like I said, if that's the problem, then well, it's also a part-time RPG, so we could check once again if there was one that was an RPG, but th that's not the case, so we'll just go with Blue Ocean, because Blue Ocean is actually likes it. So, now we got a bonus star in Eroticism and Adventure, and another one with the Pony PlayStation and Sega America. And <sighs> good genre combination, graphics and sounds. Uh, a good game with some flaws, just short of gold, so... Uh, we're gonna get to work on these con corporate contracts. And uh, we're also going to repay the rest of our credits. While researching, of course, the latest fads. So, right now we are selling rather well with that game, actually. So, uh, it looks like it's actually going to... Let's create a marketing campaign. We, get, we could use... We, we don't go for auto repeat. Uh, but we, we can pay for or to have it uh, featured in gaming magazines.
And we do not need his speed. And one point... Ah, crap. Sales really dipped there. Maybe the parents found out that the game was about erotica and not just uh, about a nice game, nice dude called Larry. It wouldn't be the first time, I mean. So we got some. Oh, we got seven million in the bank now. Uh, I don't know if where all the, that money came from. If some of it came from doing the workload, but I'm actually thinking about we should get our new office in order because right now we can't we can't stay in this building right now we have a small office building and a large one would cost us about three million so we could also go to a large warehouse and that would be four million but we have to establish the office as well and that's going to be tricky um I'm actually gonna hold hold it for a moment and see if yeah none of these contracts are really worth it. So I'm just gonna call it quits here and we are basically done with this. Uh, especially as not no new contract work is going to appear, so we're basically just gonna save the game on save game three. And we are done with that. So apparently that little weird combination we tried actually worked pretty well. But I feel less inclined to just play this game on a stretch. So this stream became about half the time as my other ones. And hopefully you had fun watching it. Catch you later.